Hey there, comic book fans. I'm back from the comic shop again this week, and there was nothing on my pull list. So I, I, I headed over there anyway, just to um, see if I can find something to pull off the shelf. No, I think there were there were no new Marvels and DCs this week, but uh, since when do I pull those off the shelf anyway? Oh, the police are going by outside. Oh, must be a funeral. There's a couple. Oh, no, it was a birthday. There's balloons and sirens going off. So uh, <laughs> I guess it's a drive-by birthday party for, for some people. But anyway, back to what's going on here in front of you. Uh, first, I'm going to show you um, my cover I bought only for, the comic I bought only from its for its cover that sits on top of my printer in its uh, in the spot where every week I put one just to kind of admire some comic I bought only for its cover this is Harley Quinn number nine from 2014 it's an Amanda Connor cover with uh, colors by Paul Mounts it was one of their selfie cover months and uh, I just kind of liked this one <laughs> this is, you can tell uh, this was back when I think 299 was the price on this. And that was probably the last time I bought Marvel or DC comics just for their covers, is when they were still two ninety nine. I was paying four or five dollars just for a comic for its cover. It just I just don't want to do it. But I like this one. I love I sort of like the complex um the the complex composition of it. Because we've got, you know, in the background, we've got all sorts of chaos going on. In the foreground, we have a second frame of the camera taking Harlequin's picture. I just this, this one just caught my eye. Like I said, I like the. Uh, I mean, Amanda's drawing is always good. Paul Mounts's colors are always nicely, nicely illustrative. Uh, but it was really the composition that sold me on this one. So, uh, 2014. That was a long time ago. Wow, that I bought that one. Uh, and then we got. Let's see our first freebie. It's the Joker. Batman, the three Jokers. Because one Joker just isn't enough. Hey, Batman's got a million people in his Batman family. Why can't the Joker have some others? Oh, my God. It's like, it's like that's what you can count on mainstream comics for. If there's something that's popular, we'll make three of it. And it's just like... Uh, I know Most people like it. Most people, three Jokers is a good thing. Or at least a lot of people. For me, you know what? That's that's one of the things I don't like about modern superhero comics is ev there's nine different versions of every one. So it's just kind of like, eh, what do I care? This Superman, this this Spider-Man goes away. There's nine more Spider-Man behind them. So what does any one Spider-Man? The cars are still going by in front of my house. What is this? Three minutes later, there's still cars going by. I wonder whose birthday it is. What is that, Werewolf? A werewolf by night. That's a weird... Oh, now a fire engine is going by. First two cop cars, now a fire engine. This must be a popular birthday. Oh, now there's a pickup truck with people dressed up in furry costumes. And there's two Disney princesses in the back of another truck. Whose birthday is it out there? Holy, they got people in costume, they got the police, they got the firemen. Wow, this is an exciting, this would be a much more exciting video if it was pointed out my window. <laughs> um, more stuff. Just stuff to look at in this week's comic shop. Comic shop news, so I'll check that out. And if you want to see what comics I picked up off the shelf to get, we'll start with the first issue. Adventure Man. Adventure Man is a woman? Okay. Adventure Man is a woman. It's a extra thick one. That's probably 60 pages. Only $4. Uh, I guess one of those... Uh, who is this? Yeah, Fraction, Dodson, Dodson, and Cowles. So Terry Dodson and Rachel Dodson. Hey, you know what? I would... I, I, I like that art team. Matt Fraction's a good writer. I didn't even realize I don't I didn't even realize this was coming out. I I've, I've seen oh where yeah, there's a nice. No, it's interesting though. I can remember the last Terry Dotson thing I read that Red One or something. Uh, I remember it came out in individual issues and then they put it out in uh, like an oversized album that European um, 
format. And I liked the I liked the oversized album a lot better than I liked the individual issues. It just somehow the art worked better at that size. Uh, it just I just liked it better. But that is a heavy comic. That is, like I said, that, I think there's at least sixty pages. So, but that's a good deal at four dollars for sure. But yes, just saw this one. I probably would have picked this one up even if I had some stuff on my pull list because, like that creative team, I still don't know why Adventure Man is a woman, but we'll find out in this story. Then I picked up. This looks like a Purple Rain Bitter Root. Uh, I've just been hearing things about Bitter Root by. Um, this is Bitter Root number eight, by the way. Uh, who does this? David F. Walker, Chuck Brown, and Sanford Green are listed as creators. And Sophie Dogson is listed as the color artist. So I don't know who's doing the drawing. All three of them are drawing. But I've just heard... Uh, I just saw a few things on Twitter this week about it. It's, it's something about um, monster hunters monster hunters in Harlem in like the 1920s or something like that. Sounded like, you know, a good thing to try out this week. I like historical stuff. I like Monster Hunters. We'll, we'll, we'll go for it. Like I said, all week I didn't have anything on my pull list. Why not try something new? Oh, by the way, last week I put both comics I got on my pull list. Um, what was it? Psychodrama Illustrated by uh, Gilbert Hernandez. No surprise I put that on my whole list um you know i'm a loving rockets fan i like beto's stuff so but i didn't even know that one was coming out either by fantagraphics otherwise I probably would have put that on my poll list even before i saw it on the comic shop if i knew it was coming out but that one went on my poll list and the boys dear becky was the subtitle that one i enjoyed that one it, it um i've only read maybe the first 10 issues of the boys so i don't know how it ended but this one takes place like 10 years after it. And they gave some little recap of how it ended, but I barely paid attention to it. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then they just caught up and they were doing whatever they're doing now, the main characters. Uh, it, was a good, it was a good first issue. So I figured, you know what? I'll put that on my pull list and give it a read. So, so two new comics on my pull list. The Boys, Dear Becky, and Psychodrama Illustrated. And what else do I have here? I picked this up. The Sumerian Red Nails, number one. This is um, Conan. The original Conan stories are now in the public domain. So this company, who is this? Ablaze. It's by Regis Hautier, Olivier Vatin, and Didier Cassegrain have been doing... Robert E. Howard, Savage Hero, Uncensored. So they've been doing some other Conan stuff. And I just flipped this open and liked the artwork... So I was like, I'll, I'll give the first issue a read. Why not? And uh, in really tiny type, they have the original story. I've actually just been reading these original. I don't think I got to Red Nails yet. I I've just been read um, when I was commuting into New York, which of course I haven't been. Um, I have a digital copy of the complete Robert E. Howard Conan that I've been reading on and off for the last year or so, and they're really good. I've never read Robert E. Howard's original Conan stories. Pages like this make me believe this was meant for a European graphic album. I don't know if it is, but when I see all that, when I see the different proportion and all that white space on the bottom, I'm kind of like, I'd rather see it in the European graphic album format if that's what it was meant for. But then they've got some bleeds going off the top, so I don't know. But we'll give it a read. We'll see how that one is. And the last thing I got, I just pulled off the shelf. It's Brian Azzarello and Maria Lovelet, Faithless 2, number one, the Tula Lute Connecting Erotic Cover. Yes, I paid an extra dollar for the, uh, it's, I think it's $5 instead of, for the Tula Lute Erotic Cover. Because I'm not a, I am not a Brian Azzarello, a fan of Brian Azzarello's writing, so the odds of me liking this are probably long. But I was like, you know what? I may as well get it. I like Tula Lute's work. Uh, so I may as well get the Tula Lute cover and put it in my comics bought just for their covers section. Let's see what it looks like. We'll see if we can sh 
Let's see if we can show it on YouTube. You know, we don't want to don't want to scare the children with nudity, but they shouldn't be watching this anyway. Let's see. There we go. Not too much nudity on it. Generally sexual situations, but uh, I guess this connects to... I guess we get more of the scene over here and over here with future covers. All right, I like the cover. So I, I generally like Tula, Tula Lute's work. I have no idea what this is about, Faithless. Here's the inside art. Some nudity in the inside art, too, so this must be pretty adult stuff. I like the inside. I flipped through an open one and said, oh, the inside art's not bad, so we'll, we'll, we'll give it a, um, we'll give it a look. I guess I can use that as a backing board, huh? <laughs> All right, now I'll show you a little of my art before we go, which I have behind me. I just finished this one. I have another one behind it, which is almost finished. It might be finished. I'm not sure. But we'll show you this one because I finished it this weekend. It's named Live Burner. And it's, once again, this woman who... A portrait of a woman who lives in the dream world. And she's got some devil horns. Uh, she may burn you. I'm not sure. She, she does not look that trustworthy. She looks like she might burn you alive. Look at those weird artistic lips. <laughs> Eyes that look right at you. Some horns around her halo behind her, her jagged halo behind her. So I just felt like doing a nut. I wanted to do another portrait, but I had no idea who I wanted to do a portrait of. So I just made, and so I just drew a face. It's like the, the, there's actually a difference between drawing a portrait and drawing a face. But uh, since I Usually I have to kind of get inspired by someone to draw a portrait. And I hate sitting around waiting for inspiration. That takes too much time. Uh, so I drew a face. Uh, and and I, I like the way it came out. I like the face I drew. And I like all the strange little textures in it. All right. You guys all have a good week out there.